All right, emergency podcast here on the OU Sports Podcast. I'm joined by Jason Mataki, Alan Lewis Razor at 5 p.m. on a Sunday night. Jeff Lubby, OU's offensive coordinator, uh, has been named Mississippi State's head coach. Obviously, Zach Selman, who used to be in Norman as, I think, deputy athletic director, is now Mississippi State's athletic director. Um, they announced his hiring about 10, 15 minutes ago. So we thought we'd jump here, jump on a pod here uh, real quick and just kind of react Um uh, you know, um, give a brief overview of Jeff Lebby's short, but, you know, kind of tumultuous uh, tenure as OU's OC, and but also maybe offer some uh, potential candidates to replace him here in Norman. Uh, I'm reading the Mississippi State release now. It says Jeff Lebby will arrive at the airport in Starkville at 8 p.m. tonight, which is literally less than three hours. So um, this is getting real really quick, guys. I know um, other people have reported that, you know, he, he told the admin and the coaching staff literally like 20 minutes ago, and uh, he's expected to tell players tonight. But, Lewis, uh, I know you're just jumping on, but uh, just quick reactions before we dive into everything else. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't help but think back just to his tenure at OU. I mean, lots of ups and downs, obviously. During the Kansas and Oklahoma State game, he was – probably the most unpopular man maybe in the state of Oklahoma, um, but then really turned it around these past couple of games. And I think it's going to be interesting if you see the same style of offense going forward with Jackson Arnold, obviously, you know, with a new offensive coordinator. Um, and then clearly everybody's eyes turn to, you know, who's going to be the next guy up. Um, obviously, Seth Luttrell is the biggest name that gets thrown out there. Um, but yeah, just uh, – Pretty interesting thinking back to his tenure and the ups and downs of what it was. Jason, you have a quick reaction? Yeah, I just, I mean, we kind of saw this coming uh, throughout the week. I mean, Jeff was a asked about it um, after OU's win. Um, and, you know, he, he said there's a time and a place for that. But I'm, I'm not shocked. Um, obviously, like you said, the Zach Selman connection – is there and it's real. Um, and I mean, great for Jeff Lubby. Uh, I, I think OU sort of prepared for this with the hires of, of Seth Luttrell earlier this year. I mean, at, at some point, Jeff Lubby was going to be a head coaching candidate somewhere. Um, and, and it's happening now. So, um, yeah, sort of my All reaction. Right. All right, guys, it sounds like Lebby interviewed for this job last Wednesday. Um, Obviously, he was asked about it on Friday after the game. So was Brent Venables. So was players. Um, and then it sounds like he was offered the job last night, slept on it, and accepted it today. Um, but let's just – let's start this off by going into, you know, when he first got here and to now. I mean, obviously, anytime Jeff Lebby or, or any of the staff members from that Baylor – those Baylor teams um, during the Art Bryles – scandal and everything like that obviously you're going to be met with questions and, and controversy and that was definitely the case with Jeff Lubby's hire here um obviously 2022 didn't go as anybody at OU planned uh, you know his offense was not really at fault there uh I mean Dylan Gabriel being hurt and that the game that I'll probably look back at as his, as his worst was um really kind of not even his fault with Dylan being hurt in the OU Texas game last year and them not even scoring a point, but that game will forever be, you know, on, uh, on OU fans minds and, uh, and in the record books for OU Texas. And, you know, he was the offensive coordinator for that. Um, the offense took a big jump this year. I think, I mean, we talked for weeks and weeks on this very pod about, and OU fans were upset all season long about this offense and it having no identity, but really, the last couple of weeks it's really um you know improved and throughout the whole season if you look at it I mean efficiency wise we, we all know the numbers I think they're fourth in total offense Dylan Gabriel um I think the indication that Lebby's offense um really worked this year is Dylan Gabriel's jump not not so much the stats or or the eye test of the play calling or and you can point to some questionable decisions during the Kansas and OSU games but I think really the indicator is the development of Dylan Gabriel um, but what, what will you guys remember most about his, and we didn't even touch on, maybe you guys, one of you guys can, but obviously the, um, Art Bryles incident earlier this year. 
I I think the main thing for me is is I mean yeah his offenses are are explosive but I think when it mattered most his play calling really crumbled um and whether or not that's a benefit to OU moving forward or not um is is a sight to be seen but I I think he leads a very explosive type of offense when it's working um but there's tons of inconsistencies that come in his play calling that doesn't show up on paper, um, like against a Kansas or an Oklahoma state. Um, I think that's really the story of his tenure, to be honest. Um, that's really how I look back on it. And just as name comes with a lot of weight, especially in situations like Art Bryles, um, showing up on the field after a win against SMU, um, just stuff like that can't happen, but, um, yeah really up and down tenure as Lewis sort of noted too. Yeah. I think you can't help, but think how much that whole Bryle situation had to do with kind of, I mean, obviously it's not a breakup, like Levy's getting elevated to a higher position than what he's at. Like you have to wonder how much of an effect that had, how much hostility there still was even weeks later. Cause it happened what after week two against SMU. Um, so definitely something that I'm sure OU fans will wonder. Um, but yeah, when I think back to Levy, one of the things I think about is the fact that his connection with Dylan Gabriel helped get him here. And obviously he helped get Jackson Arnold there um, and works with the quarterbacks really closely at practice. So uh, just the development of quarterbacks. And I think those two things are probably one of the more attractive things that Mississippi State sees about him. Yeah, for sure. And then obviously he developed Matt Corral at Ole Miss, Dylan Gabriel now. So um, got a history with quarterbacks. Obviously he was on staff at Baylor when RG3 won the Heisman. So, um, but really interesting stuff. Let's let's jump into what I think is probably the most important aspect of this. We'll get into candidates to replace him in a little bit, but we've already seen recruits take to social media reacting to the news. I think probably – the biggest question mark in everybody's mind this whole season, whether, um, I mean, whether you were, we, we were talking about him being fired or leaving for a head coaching job was what happens with Jackson Arnold. And I think that was some people's, some OU fans' worry or um, hesitation with parting ways with Jeff was, you know, what's going to happen with Jackson Arnold. I talked to his dad last night and you can read our story on OU daily.com. Um, sounds like Jackson is locked into OU. He, um, uh, his dad told me it doesn't affect him at all and that he plays for OU. So um, you can take with that with what you want. But um, what are you guys' thoughts on other potential players um, or staff members, for that matter, uh, leaving with Jeff to, to go to Mississippi State? Yeah, I I think, I mean, and I'm sure we'll hit on this later, but I really wouldn't be shocked if Dylan Gabriel – um went in the transfer portal he has one year left um and and joined him at mississippi state i mean i i personally think that his nfl prospects after the season are are better than any point in his career um but i don't know i mean dylan has stated that he loves jeff um and he's the reason why he came to oklahoma i, I would not be shocked if dylan gabriel um, added or went on to his final year of eligibility at Mississippi State. Um, and I think many players and then staff will join Jeff. I mean, that's probably the reason why a lot of people came to Oklahoma in the first place. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I think looking recruiting wise, um, and I mean, Jackson's obviously the biggest one. So uh, just to know, at least from his father, um, that he's not going anywhere is huge to OU fans. Um, But, I mean, looking recruiting-wise, it's just – it depends on how much you want to read into tweets that guys have been sending out today. Um, But some of them seem like David Stone, he just doubled down and expressed his support even more for OU. Said, like, you know, these are the times where we're going to rise up. Um, David Mitchell is the big one. He had, like, a couple emojis that you don't love to see if you're an OU fan. But, I mean – who knows? So it, it just depends how much you want to read into those. 
Um, and it should be an interesting couple months here of maybe decommitments, transfers, stuff like that. I mean, that stuff is bound to get interesting every offseason, um, but this one especially with Webby leaving. All right, guys, let's get into some – this is probably the biggest question mark on OU fans' minds now. Let's get into some potential um, candidates to replace. Jeff, as offensive coordinator here at Oklahoma, um, the one everybody's going to say, and probably the obvious one, I mean, Jason said it earlier, is Seth Luttrell, um, former North Texas head coach. Um, I don't – I think I've seen a little bit of this online, but I just – I think that that's the safe bet. Uh, I'm not quite sure if it's like – and and I think there's been other reports saying that, you know, OU is going to consider um, outside, you know, coaches to hire and not just hiring from within. But uh, it seems like something Brent Venables would do is is to hire within and, and go with a safe bet like uh, Seth Luttrell. But um, who are some other guys around the nation or, or even within that you guys could uh, think off top of the top of head to, you know, replace Lubby? I think outside of Latrell, I mean, two obvious choices would be a DeMarco Murray or an Emmett Jones. Um, I mean, those are two program guys that have been involved with a lot of a lot of recruits. Um, I know Emmett Jones. I mean, we've seen what he's done since he's taken the helm um, at in the wide receiver room. I mean, Oklahoma Sears wide receiver room has been booming since then, um, you know, DeMarco Murray, I mean, he's been hot on the recruiting trail. Taylor Tatum comes to mind. Um, yeah, those are the two program guys outside of Seth Luttrell that really come to mind. I, I, I can't pinpoint anybody outside of the nation just yet, um, in, at least in my mind. So I'll hand that off to you guys. Yeah, I mean, it's always tough because, like, we have no clue if guys are even thinking about this position or not. I mean, like, a guy like Cliff Kingsbury comes to mind just because, I mean, he, he's – I mean, you go from head coach in the NFL to now offensive coordinator at a team whose offense wasn't all that great, Didn't definitely didn't live up to expectations this past offseason. So he's a guy you throw out there. Um, but, yeah, Emmett Jones, I, I know I did a story on him before the season, and pretty much everybody I talked to was saying that he's going to become an offensive coordinator – at a top level program at some point. Um, wouldn't be shocked to see that, but it'll be really interesting to see what they do here, just considering in house or if they try to go out and hire from elsewhere. Yeah, guys, I think Emma Jones is a guy that you don't want to lose. I, I think he's a potential like uh, Jeff Levy taking him to Mississippi State um, candidate. But some guys I just jotted down here I, Seth Latrell's at the top of the list for me. I think it's just a safe hire. He's in here. Um, you know, you could roll with him, see what his offense is, maybe hire a co-OC with him. Uh, some other guys I got here, Kansas offensive coordinator, Andy Kotelnecki. I mean, we've seen what he's been doing with Jalen Daniels um, and Jason Bean in that offense. And I think he outcoached Jeff in that Kansas game. That could be a name that you go and look at, especially if Lance Leipold leaves for another job. Uh, I got Cliff on here. I mean, Sean Lewis, the Colorado guy. Um, he might not be that good of a hire anymore since he got demoted. But, um, I mean, you throw out names like Joe Brady. I mean, he probably doesn't want to leave the NFL. But um, I, I think I think if you're Joe C. and, and, and Brent Venables here, you've got to go nationwide and, and make a hire here. I think Seth Luttrell would be a good one and a safe one. But I think you got to look outside the box. And I think – I mean, I remember Cliff Kingsbury's name popping up for when Lincoln left for head coach here at OU. I think he's a guy that you could go out and, and obviously he's got connections to – the state of Texas and and he's been around OU a lot over the years. I think that's a guy that you could go tab as your OC. Um so I think those are just a few names. We'll we'll dive deeper on it and have a story on OUD.com later. But um guys, anything else real quick here on this emergency pod uh to react to with Jeff? I mean, you've got to think some guys are going with him, whether it's Joe John Finley or uh, I'm sure a lot of GAs and a lot of, you know, other assistants um, definitely are going to go with him. But as as far as position coaches, you know, you just never know. Yeah, I mean, Joe John has been there with him pretty much every step of the way um, for his coaching career. So that's one that, like, you got to figure maybe he leaves. Who knows? Um, 
But outside of that, I don't see it being a huge effect. Then again, you never know. And I mean, we'll just have to see. I think we're in for a really interesting month or so here. One thing I will say for the recruits to watch, um, a guy like Isaiah Autry comes to mind, offensive tackle. He's from the state of Mississippi. Um, you can watch out for that. Um, Mike Hawkins, the quarterback. I mean, he's not. He's probably not going to start over Jackson Arnold or even Kevin Sperry when he gets here. So a guy like that you could maybe see flip into Mississippi State and go with Levy. I did a story on him uh, when he committed, and him and his dad are really close to Jeff. Um, so just never know. But if, if there's nothing else, I'm Colton Sully, Jason Batakia, Lewis Razor. Keep it with OUDaily.com for everything and the aftermath of Jeff Levy's departure to Mississippi State. And uh, we'll catch you next time.